Hello, Captains. Your host, Brent Justice, here. Today, I've got some new Star Trek Online news. Not a whole lot to go over today. Uh, just some, well, I guess at least one really big piece of news. It's the announcement of what they have planned next for the next big release, which is coming in a month, and we call these season updates, pretty much. And uh, the one that is scheduled next is coming in a month from now, in September. So it's a whole month away, a little bit more than a month away. But it has some things for us, so let's check it out. Uh, this one is called Star Trek Online Awakening. And it is coming September 10th, so just a, a little bit more than a month here. But September 10th, and we see Stamets on here. This is, again, a Discovery Era release, or at least if it's not the Discovery Era, which actually I think it's going to be back in the 25th century now, it's still Discovery Era content. It's a Discovery series content. So that's what you can expect here. It's a continuation of the Discovery storyline that they've already introduced in Star Trek Online. So, uh, there is a teaser trailer. I have not seen it. So let's see here. Uh, I won't play the music for copyright reasons, but obviously we see the Mycelial Forest. We've seen that in Discovery. Looks quite interesting. Um, and there's Stamets. And that's pretty much the trailer. <laughs> so, not a lot going on there. Um, what we can tell from that, though, and actually what we can tell from uh, from reading this is that he's going to be a hologram. So it's not the real Stamets. It's like a hologram, a sentient hologram, as they call it. So let's read this. It's time to return to 2410, Captains. Our multi-part expansion over time that began with Age of Discovery and ended with Rise of Discovery is now complete. And with it, we brought a ton of excitement to Star Trek Online. An entirely new faction, a revamped tutorial experience, and six new episodes starring beloved actors Mary Wiseman, Jason Isaacs, and Rekha Sharman uh, brought the story of Star Trek Discovery to Star Trek Online. We have experienced players... We have experienced players more to do with updates like random task force operations, tier 6 reputations, and personal endeavors. And we unleash the featured task force operation system, bringing new stories and experiences to the game more often. Now we're moving back to our main setting, the year 2410, and we're bringing Anthony Rapp with us. So 2410, of course, is where the story in Star Trek Online takes place in the 25th century. So they're coming back to a non-discovery era but Discovery Era content. See what they're doing there? It's still going to be Discovery series content, but just in the normal time frame of the game, basically. Rap, known to Star Trek fans as Paul Stemmets from Star Trek Discovery, is the star of our next content update, Star Trek Online Awakening. During Age of Discovery, players witnessed Jaula and her Klingon forces steal mycelial technology, which pulled them forward to the year 2410. Captains must now follow the ruthless Klingon matriarch back to the 25th century to ensure she doesn't corrupt the entire mycelial network in pursuit of her own dangerous agenda. Unfortunately, the insurmountable threat Jaula poses to the universe also draws out the Alachi, who fear her actions will lead to the destruction of their home planet. Hmm, the Alachi are tied into this, huh? That's interesting. And they will stop at nothing to protect it. In order to complete their mission, captains must rely on the help of an uh, astromycologist astro expert, a sentient hologram of the legendary Lieutenant Commander Paul Stamets from the USS Discovery to help them track down Jaula and repair the tears she's caused in the fabric of space. Awakening will also shine a new light on patrols with a system that makes them easier to find and easier to play and offers a new reward. Now this I like a lot because you know how I am on patrols. We'll talk about that in a second. We're, ce we're celebrating this by launching five brand new patrols with Awakening that see you jetting around the galaxy with Stamets and Stowe favorites like Captain Kumarake uh, stopping Jaula's plans. In addition, there will be a mycelial event coming, which allows you to earn a new Tier 6 Alashi ship 
by completing the new episode Patrols and TFO. Additional details will be released in the days leading up to Awakenings launch on September 10th. We'll have more information for you this weekend in Star Trek Las Vegas, or at Star Trek Las Vegas, even more details as we get closer to Awakenings release. So there's a lot of good things that I like here. Number one, interesting that the Alachi are being brought into this. How would the Alachi connect to the mycelial network? We've never had that connection before. Uh, is that somehow a connection? Um, I don't know, but interesting. Uh, I do like the Alachi as an enemy, as an, as an, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone to go against. I love their ships and I love their style. Um, the Alachi are very cool, but um, it's, it'll be interesting to see how they tie the Alachi into that. Uh, something about the destruction of their home planet. Now that's interesting because we've never seen their home planet, of course, where the Alachi actually reside. As far as I know, they live in subspace. So... Somehow, I guess this has to connect there somehow. I like that. I also like that we're now back in the proper time frame, 2410 of the game. So we're not in that Discovery Era time period. Uh, we need to be in the time period of the game. That makes more sense. Uh, so that's fine and good. I like, you know, that we're getting the voiceover and like liking of uh, Commander Stamets. You know, that's great. Having the actual actor there again, you know, uh, doing the voice acting and all that is cool. However, I do, I do wonder where this sentient hologram of him comes from. Obviously, not the technology of the time for um, Discovery. So this has to be something that was created later by Starfleet. Um, it's a sentient hologram, but yet at the same time, it wouldn't really be Stamets. It's not really his mind. So I don't know how that works exactly. Uh, so questions there. The next thing I like, however, is shining a light on patrols again. Patrols used to be a big part of Star Trek Online. You had the mission journal, which had your missions. And inside the mission journal, originally, a long, long time ago, patrol missions were in the mission journal. And they were called patrol missions. You would literally do a patrol mission, and you would go out and it, you would do three patrols. You would do like this patrol A, B, and C. And after you complete all three of them, it would count as a mission. You finished a mission, a patrol mission, and then you get a total sum of XP. Well, you get XP for each patrol, plus you get a total sum XP for completing the mission of the three patrols. That used to be a thing. And then it became a thing again uh, in the Delta Quadrant. They used to have the patrol missions built into the Delta Quadrant. In fact, I have lately been playing through all those patrols on the Delta Quadrant. If you have not been checking out my Romulan playthrough, check it out now because the last several videos I have been playing the patrol missions that used to be in the Delta Quadrant uh, that they've taken out of the mission journal. And those are the patrols called Friends in Unlikely Places, Enemies in All, all the Unusual Places with Friends Like These, Know Your Enemies, Better with Friends, and then Taking Care of Enemies. Those used to be the patrol missions in the Delta Quadrant. I'm playing them right now in order as they used to be. Um, what they've done is removed patrol, patrol missions from the mission journal in the past. The patrols were still technically there, but they removed them as missions. And the problem up until now, it looks like, is they never have put in a way for you to find where those patrols are. If you're new to the game and you've never played this game before, you wouldn't know what a patrol is. You wouldn't know that they exist and you wouldn't know where to you wouldn't know where to go to you would not know where to go to go do them. You wouldn't know that you could fly to the system and engage a patrol that way and you wouldn't know which systems have patrols if you are new to the game. Because what they did not do is they did not put any patrols under the available tabs or in progress tabs. They didn't create like a side quest. What they should have done is created a side quest tab. It should say side quest. And then all those should be the patrols that you can do in the, uh, in the, in the um, systems that you're in. Or the, I guess you could say the, uh, the quadrants or whatever you're in. All those patrols should be listed like under side quests. 
that's what they should have done and then people would know that they're there and they could do them like missions so anyway I got that whole problem with them taking them out but it looks like they are now shining a light back on patrols again and it says here that they're gonna make them easier to find and easier to play that's a plus because that's the whole problem I had with with the patrols for the last several years is they were hard to find unless you knew that they existed you would not know that you could do them the new players wouldn't know so I we need a way to find them and uh, hopefully that's what they're doing here and then it says also that they are bringing in new patrols with awakening we're gonna have five brand new patrols that's great that's perfect but let me tell you the Delta Quadrant expansion when Delta Rising came out let me tell let me let me count how many patrols they included with the expansion because I've got a list of just the Delta this is just the Delta Quadrant patrols okay just Delta Quadrant one two I'm, I'm reading from a list that I have from all um here like Argala and Jarleth and the Borg battlefield and Ocampa fighter and Shakira system and Trochila and Shivola and Orndell, all those systems. So I'm counting them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I'm counting 27 patrols at least that they put in in the Delta Rising expansion when that expansion came out. 27 in the Delta Quadrant alone. So that tells you how many there are. And then we know that the Alpha Quad, the uh, Beta Quadrant has, you know, a lot of patrols in there as well. And the, uh, the uh, Alpha Quadrant as well. So, five new ones is not a lot, but at least there are some new ones. At least we're finally getting some new ones. That is a huge plus. And uh, that's going to play into getting a Tier 6 Ilachi ship. That's great. I want a new Ilachi ship. I love the Ilachi ships. And uh, I need to do some reviews of them. Because uh, they're really great, and I love their crescent weapon design that they have. It's really, really cool stuff. So anyway, I like this stuff. It looks like we're also getting a mycelial event. And uh, so with the event, the patrols, the TFO, a chance to get a new T6 Ilachi ship. Yeah, that's going to be good. So all that stuff is good. The only problem I have with this is, again, it's Discovery Era content. But it sounds like it's going to be the last Discovery type of content. Sounds like this is the end of it. And I guess the other thing that I, because of that, even though it's a good thing this will be the last of it and we can move on, it, it, I still don't feel that there's enough Discovery missions in the Discovery um, faction. So to me, a faction needs like at least, you know, like 20 missions. I just don't feel there's enough missions for the Discovery faction to be considered a full faction. It's a half faction. It's a quarter faction. It's, it's, it's even less than that. It's not a lot. Out of all of the factions, it has the least amount of missions in it. So it's, it's very low on... Um, even being considered a faction I mean it barely crosses that line of being a faction there's just not enough missions and if this is the last of the discovery content then that means that faction is just going to forever be very short and quick and small and just really not a big faction and that part I don't like either they really, I mean, what they need to do is a, that what they should have done, here's what they should have done, is like saved all this for one big release and do another expansion release and call it the Discovery Expansion. And then give us like, you know, 20 missions at once. <laughs> you know, do what they did with the Discovery Rising, right? We had like 15, 10, or 10 or 15 missions or something, 10 missions or something like that, 10 or 15 that was great that wasn't a faction that was just a new area to play in but if they had done something like that for the discovery era then it would feel more like a faction and so that's my only problem is there's just still not enough missions for the discovery faction 
And if this is going to be the end of it, then it's just, that's how it's always going to be. And that just kind of sucks, but I guess that's how it is. Anyway, that's coming September 10th. So Awakening, a month from now, look forward to that. I will cover it, all of it, as much as I can when it comes out. The next thing, we have some uh, temporal starship updates. I wanted to show this specifically because I love temporal starships in this game. I love the Wells class. You know, I love playing those 29th or 31st century, you know, starships that we have seen in the TV show. So uh, we're getting some updates to these ships that are noteworthy. Um, they are making upgrades and changes to some of the ships in an, un yep, in an upcoming update aimed at increasing clarity and player satisfaction satisfaction with a new set of starships so what are we getting we are getting um temporal destroyer and science vessels are now completely temporal originally found in the temporal lockbox the temporal destroyers and science vessels are the game's first starships flung through time to end up in the hands of players since the release of the temporal specialization players have been clamoring for temporal operative versions of these starships but a timeline change is imminent, and these ships will be changing with it. In the upcoming update, the commander seat on the Tier 6 version of these ships will be updated to have the Temporal Operative Specialization, and the ships, ships will gain access to the Molecular Reconstruction mechanic. These changes are fully retroactive to your existing versions of these ships. No need to acquire new versions, which is good. This applies to the Clean Decline Temporal Destroyer, the Talora Temporal Destroyer, the Charpok, the Vernet, the Samor, and the Kulpa vessels. Flight deck cruisers are now fully flight deck carriers. Flight deck cruisers have suffered from an identity problem compared to dreadnought cruisers, which have often been seen as flight deck cruisers, but better. To help flight deck cruisers have their own unique identity and perform more in line with other ships, we are updating them across the board to be flight deck carriers. All flight deck carriers, as they will be named going forward, will be updated to have two hangar bays. This establishes two different spaces for the ship types. Dreadnought cruisers, which are unchanged in this update, are the cruiser subtype with a hangar bay. Their mastery package is focused on their hull and weapons and have the weapons and attract fire cruiser commands and only one hangar bay. Flight deck carriers are the engineering version of carriers. Like other carriers, they have two hangar bays and the faster hangar bay recharge mastery ability. As engineering based starships, they have access to the shield frequency modulation and attract fire cruiser commands, in addition to a sturdy hull and eight total weapons. This change falls, uh, affects the following starships and will apply retroactively. The Miracle Worker Flight Deck Cruiser, the Seven Miracle Worker, the Herald Quas Flight Deck, Cruiser, the Cardassian Intel Flight Deck Cruiser, Orion, Blackguard Flight Deck Assault Cruiser, Sulaban, Silic Flight Deck Assault Cruiser, Tellarite, Prelim Flight Deck Assault Cruiser, Voth Bastion Flight Deck Cruiser, Corsair Flight Deck Cruise, uh, Cruiser Retrofit, Corsair Flight Deck Cruiser, Marauder Flight Deck Cruiser, and Decoit Flight Deck Cruiser. Escort carriers are now named Strike Wing Escorts. For similar reasons, escort carriers are being updated. Tactical-based starships have a similar split between dreadnought carriers and escort carriers. Unlike the above comparison, the difference in identity is already there. Escort carriers trade the second hangar bay and higher defense stats of the dreadnought carrier for an exp experimental weapon and some maneuverability. The only significant issue here is that they're called carriers despite only having one hangar bay. To better communicate the identity of escort carriers as escorts, they happen to have a hangar bay and not true carriers, they are being renamed to Strike Wing Escorts. And their quick deployment ship mastery is being changed to be Enhanced Weapon Systems. This change affects the following ships, Mirror Escort Carriers, the Herc Ravager Escort Carrier, Zindi, the Jem'Hadar Heavy Escort Carrier, Jem'Hadar Heavy Escort Carrier, Fleet Heavy Escort Carrier, uh, Heavy Escort Carrier, Fleet Heavy Escort Carrier, and Heavy Escort Carrier. <laughs> okay. Similar ships not being changed. There are some other ships that do not entirely fit in existing ship classifications, such as the Obelisk Carrier, the Command Battle Cruisers, the Herc Dreadnought Carrier, or the Temporal Heavy Dreadnoughts. As these starships 
are parts of much smaller groups and have names that are generally more accurate to their function than some of the other ones above. These ships will remain unchanged with this update. If any future changes happen with these star starships, you should expect them to be name clarifications or minor, minor mechanical changes. So basically, if you own any of those ship these ships that are shown here, note that those changes are coming to those ships. It's all going to be retroactive, so you don't have to require new ones. It'll just happen automatically for you. So just note that, because that may you may have a ship and notice all of a sudden that its name changes to what type of ship it is, or its mastery changes, or something like that. So just keep an eye out for that if you have the if they have that. Looks like just a bunch of clarification and naming changes and stuff here mainly, um, but the uh, temporal ships. Now getting the molecular deconstruction beam, that's important, and the temporal specializ specialization uh, as well is uh, also important now for those temporal ships. So they're going to share that powers, those powers with, quote, the, temp the other temporal starships in the game. So that's cool. Whew, that's a lot. Okay, well that's all the news really I had today. The big one here is Awakening coming in a month, and then we've got some updates on ships there coming probably before that. And of course, when Awakening comes, expect that I will cover it fully. So subscribe to the channel so you can get those updates uh, for when it comes out, and I will cover all the new aspects of it. I'll play all the new patrols, the new mycelial event, and uh, everything else and uh, hopefully see how the Alachi thing is connected I'm really interested there that's interesting okay thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next one check out Twitter at Brent underscore justice for updates you can follow me there also check out my patreon page patreon.com forward slash Brent justice this helps support the channel and also allows me to publish more and more videos